Thank you. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview about LLVM OpenMP mostly. Uh, I will touch on uh, support for CUDA and HIP, and I have a bonus material in the end for some questions. I'm trying to focus on application developers here. And um, if you are interested in what I'm going to say, or you're like, you know, okay, I want to know more, this is actually going to be a kind of a a short version of a three-hour tutorial I gave at IWOMP um, that really goes into details about um, tips and tricks for application developers, what to do in what situations, what cool features are there, and so on and so forth. So we, we give, I give you the cliff notes here. But that link, which is for the till the end of the year for IWOMP participants, will get you to uh, the three-hour tutorial with lots of details. Um, so it might be a little too long, but it's certainly detailed. Oh, yeah. Cool. Let's start. If you are looking at uh, LLVM, LLVM Clang probably is, is where you would start nowadays. Um, and you want it to, you want to build it yourself because you want to, you know, the newest features, the newest bug fixes, or you want to play with it. Um, a single CMake command usually suffices to get LLVM um, from the GitHub and be able to do GPU offloading with it. So this, this uh, CMake command will probably get you an, a client compiler that can do CUDA offloading, OpenMP offloading, and so on and so forth. Um, there's a lot of uh, useful flags that are described on these web pages down there. And this is the first out of a few slides that you might want to just screenshot instead of me going over all of it. Um, those are, you know, like information for later in case you, you know, you need it, you can go back to it, you find the resources. Take a screenshot if you like it. Um, similarly, this is my cheat sheet for just using technically any C++ compiler. Um, make always sure you have a fast linker, use things like CC cache and, a, and, and, and an alternative to make that is faster. Consider link time optimization and we'll get to that later. Um, uh, there's a lot of good tooling in the C++ world, C world that you should consider. Um, always make sure you get the right optimization flags and the right architecture set. And then on the LLVM specific set side here, the online documentation is often not that bad. So there's a lot of documentation to a lot of topics there. We have a lot of sanitizers that are really useful. And uh, if you built your own LLVM, a release and a certs build is probably sufficient for you rather than a full debug build. Okay, this one is OpenMP specific, LLVM OpenMP specific. Um, Again, cheat sheet, so take a screenshot of this. Um, we'll get into details of some of these as we go along. So I will not talk about them now. Take a screenshot and we'll go on. Oh yeah, so first things first. If you have any questions with about LLVM, about LLVM OpenMP, any other subtopic, go and ask the community. I mean, LLVM is, is mainly community driven. So there is no, you know, there is a lot of companies behind it, but the companies have different interests and so on and so forth. And we all come together in this community and we have various ways for you to get involved, but also to answer your questions. Go and ask your questions, it's free. There is like a forum mailing list, which is called Discourse. There is a persistent Discord chat. There is an IRC chat. There are sync up meetings on various subtopics, including ALS analysis, MLIR, machine learning, OpenMP and so on and so forth. There's even office hours nowadays where you can talk to experts and get asked them questions. Um, so really make use of this. Like there's a lot of, lot of information out there, but you can also ask your questions and they will be usually be answered. Now, looking at the latest release, which is LLVM 15, which was just released um, very, sh like we are looking at the first month after release. So um, there's a couple of new changes that are especially interesting for the OpenMP offloading uh, folks, but also for the GPU, CUDA, and HIP support. So for one, we have a new offloading driver. So the thing that kind of orchestrates all the offloading, it is used by default for OpenMP, but for CUDA and HIP, you have to enable it with a runtime flag. Um, the, in addition to this new driver, or with this new driver, we add a lot of support. One is we get multi-architecture binaries, so you can have a single library or executable that will run on all kinds of platforms, that will run on AMDs, on NVIDIA platforms, that will run on, you know, an SM30 and an SM80 and a GFX908. So it will, you can 
bundle all of them into one library or like static library or all of them into one executable and it will just work. Um, we have link time optimization and well, LLVM had that for the longest time. We now have link time optimization for device code. So if you go to the GPU, you can now enable LTO on the GPU side only if you use the new driver. So if you use OpenMP with the new driver or CUDA with the new driver, you can do link time optimization for your device code. And a lot of times that actually like gives you quite a performance boost, even if all your code is in a single translation unit. So you really wanna consider turning that on and we're probably going to turn it on by default. Um, as I said, static library support is now in there. All ways of generating a static library that has device code in it and then using it should work. If there is a way that doesn't work, let us know. Um, OpenMP with the new driver becomes interoperable with CUDA and HIP, which we'll see later a little bit. And we have a lot of additional flags in that release to improve performance in, in situations where the compiler cannot argue what is correct uh, or what, what static, what transformation is correct, you can help the compiler. Um, so I always have this community effort slide with a lot of names from a lot of institutions. So you see this is you know me giving a talk, but the work is done by a lot of people. And um, there is probably more people that, and I should update this slide soon just to give you an idea. On the top left corner, you see a link to our weekly meeting. Uh, we meet once a, once a week for LLVM OpenMP. And uh, feel free to join these, feel free to join any meetings and they're all in this LLVM calendar. Okay, um, I mentioned this before, but there's various ways to get involved. We have, um, right now we have an FAQ for the LLVM OpenMP webpage, on the LLVM OpenMP webpage. We have these meetings where we're like 25 people-ish every week. Uh, it's mostly GPU focused, but you get also the people from all the vendor companies such that, you know, if you bring up an issue there, we might come up with a solution that works across all of the compilers, all of the vendors, which is really good. Um, we have office hours, we have the discourse OpenMP category, and we have uh, a Slack and a weekly meeting uh, for OpenMP specific optimization. So if there's something, you know, you, you want to see the following optimization done or the following feature prototyped in LLVM, that might be a good place to, to find people to help you to do so. Um, and now as a kind of case study of people that actually reached out and worked with us on their code. So they came to us and said, okay, we, we are really interested in using LLVM OpenMP, but our, co our performance is really bad. So we looked at their code. And um, so you don't have to read all of this. The, the, the main idea here is on the right, the highlighted numbers. So all of the numbers that are in the uh, green oval are speed up numbers from the different optimizations that we performed while working with them. We, like the first thing we did, we made a CMake Unity build, which effectively is copy together all the files into one big file and then compile it. We don't need to do that anymore because we now have device side link time optimization, device side LTO, which allows us to not do this, but still get the same benefit, but it's much faster. And then we help them with determining what, uh, what optimization flags they can use. And then we help them, like we worked with them and found a performance bug in LLVM. And then we help them with improving their code. And at the end of the day, you know, if you if you multiply all these factors together, the speed up that they got just from you know working together with us on the compiler application development was like a, a hundred x or something like that. So it's it's really you know it adds up, and we're usually really happy to work with app teams as well in close collaboration to make their code faster and learn in the process what optimizations we're missing, where we are like having. Um, insufficiencies in our runtime and in the compilation and so on and so forth. So, so this was really a good experience. And if people are interested, you really should, you know, reach out. Um, so shout out to John and the OpenMC team who did, and uh, I hope they had a good time as we did. Okay, um, there's a lot going on in the, in the uh, OpenMP ecosystem, especially like in LLVM. So this is just, you know, uh, an excerpt of all the scientific papers that are written with everything from tooling to optimizations. Um, not all of it is, you know, goes back into LLVM. So if you download LLVM, you don't get all of this, but a lot of it. 
Um, feel free to take a picture in case you ever like, you know, want to know more about things, especially if you're, you know, in the scientific world. But this shows you, I, I'm showing you this mainly to convince you that there is a lot of, you know, research efforts going in. So if you have fun and interesting problems in your code or you want to, you know, figure out or you have an idea for a better way to make it fast or offload it, um, there's probably people out there interested in working with you. Okay, let's look at some you know end user end user uh, improvements. So for one, nowadays if you turn on uh, minus g or minus g line tables, uh, minus g line tables only, you get um, information about where a crash happens if there one happens. It tells you to visit this web page that has more debugging options and so on and so forth. So the the error messages that come out of OpenMP offload is are much better than before. At the same time. If you use, if you go to this web page and you use the, the what is um, explained there to do debugging, you get these um, environment variable flags. So lipom target info is, is highlighted here is one of them that allows you to uh, see what the compiler did with your code. So how did the compiler execute your kernels, your target regions? What data is copied and when uh, and why? And um, how did the compiler map, you know, implicit arguments and so on and so forth. So this really helps you to understand what is going on under the hood. Um, and you can get various kinds of information and at a like fine granularity. At the same time, we have a debug mode, which is, um, which you have to enable at compiler time and at runtime together. And once you enable it at both times, you get these um, debug checks in baked into your program. And these debug checks do, you know, they print out if a certain, like if certain weird situations arise, for example, here they print out whenever malloc returns a null pointer. That can happen, especially on an AMD GPU, but also on an NVIDIA GPU, if you run out of heap memory. And if malloc returns a null pointer, oftentimes things go bad. So, the, so here in this example, it did, and uh, one way of solving this would now be to use an environment variable that we expose to increase your heap memory. And then this error message would disappear and things will probably run. Oh yeah, um, I mentioned this before, we have these assumptions to help the compiler to do better optimizations of your program. To, because you don't really know what the compiler needs, we also have remarks, so optimization remarks. You can turn them on with the commands in the upper left corner here. So our pass basically turns on just generic remarks. Our pass miss turns on things about missed optimizations and analysis about analysis results that, that we collected throughout. And then it, these remarks also tell you what to do about them. Like, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? On how do you kind of interact and, and act upon this now? And usually you have like three different ways. You can write pragma OMP assumes. You can write attribute assume or you can use command line flags. And we have um, we have standard assumptions in the OpenMP specification. We have LLVM specific assumptions that we that we recognize. And we have by now at least, you know, uh, five, I think by now more than that, command line flags that, that provide assumptions to the compiler. One more thing is we even have, you know, environment variables that you can uh, use to uh, improve performance if you do not need certain guarantees. And all of these are kind of um, explained on our LLVM.openMP, sorry, openmp.lvm.org webpage, where we explain all the environment variables and so on, and all the remarks and so on. So let's look at an example. This is, you know, classic vectorization. On the left, you have some code, you compile it with Clang and you say, hey, give me the loop vectorize analysis report. And it gives you this remark that says, you know, we couldn't vectorize the loop because floating point operations are not uh, reordered, like we can't reorder them. And then you can put a pragma of SIMD there and then it will vectorize the code and everything will be fine. Similarly, you have this, you have this device code here with, you know, device uh, declare target. And then you run the analysis. This time you run OpenMP opt instead of the loop vectorizer remarks. And what it tells you is, Oh, we have these global, um, globalized variables, and um, we they are globalized because they are potentially captured. And then it tells you you can use this attribute no escape to override this. 
and it gives you this this code at the end. If you look at the, the lowest row at the end, it says OMP113. And if you go to the web page, all of these diagnostic numbers are have their own um, page that has oftentimes examples, descriptions of the problem, or why it is a good thing, and what it means, and how to how to work with this. So we're really trying to you know provide a good user experience here. Um, there's also more information about uh, how to record these remarks, how to filter them based on your uh, hotness in your code so you can see only remarks that are you know relevant to performance and there's also help with regards to how to show remarks inside of your source code rather than on the command line and so on and so forth so there's a lot of tooling there that you can utilize now i mentioned this briefly before we have multi-architecture binaries so when you now nowadays if you download a clang you can say um offload architecture and then you put the sub-architecture there. And OpenMP is going to do all the rest for you. So if you look at the um, example here in the in the, the second command, clang, um, you don't have the first command and the second command are equivalent, but you used to write the first command, which was like long and cumbersome. And now you can just say, okay, OpenMP and my offload architectures are the following sub-architectures. And then we will build it for all these sub-architectures and we'll embed everything together. Um, we can you can use LLVM object dump to analyze uh, a, an object file or uh, to, to determine what kind of images are in there. In this case, you see we have the GFX 90A and the SM80 image in there. And now if you link against this, you can either link against both or one of them or none of them. Um, I mentioned uh, the link time optimization. Really, really, this helps you to get better performance, even if you only have a single translation unit. And it usually isn't going to make your code that much slower to compile because we only do it for the device code. Um, so minus F offload LTO, minus F offload minus LTO turns it on. And um, you have to run it both at the compile and at the linker. Um, so this is kind of a little odd for now, but this is right now what it is. Here are some, some results on uh, what happens if you turn on LTO and you see on the left, these benchmarks like XSBench, SU3, and I think even MiniMDoc uh, Mini are single translation units. So they don't benefit from the multi-translation unit optimization. While on the right, the OpenMC and Thermo 4PFM benefit from multi-translation unit, uh, uh, multi-translation unit LTO. So they really get you better performance because they um, optimize across all of your files when you offload to GPUs. Um, static libraries are now fully supported. So no matter how you build your static libraries, it should just work. You can also, you know, again, analyze them and see what is, uh, what offload images are in there. Um, and then if you, you can use this to build static libraries that only contain device code, for example. So, and then you can basically ship static libraries that are only for the device. And if you use LTO, so the link time optimization, there is no overhead in, you know, bundling your device code in static libraries and then merging it with your kernels later on. Um, if you do not use LTO, you would have these call edges and other overheads that, that you might not want. And as you see here, if when you do the offload arch um, command, you can have a lot of sub architectures. So you can compile this for a, a whole bunch of architectures and then say, okay, um, embed all of these sub architectures in this, uh, in this object file, make it a library. And later on, I just link in that library for all the support. Um, now with the new driver, so here, if you see the minus minus offload new driver option and the FGPU RDC option, when you turn them on, you can actually link together OpenMP and uh, CUDA code or OpenMP and HIP code. So, uh, which is which is great because now, you know, you can mix and match your program. You can, you can use uh, CUDA libraries that you find on the internet or CUDA codes, and you can call them from your OpenMP code Technically, also vice versa. So here is an example just where we do this. 
uh, we compile a CUDA file, um, we compile an OpenMP file, and then we link them together, and then we can call both in the same program, okay? If you're only interested in device code, you can um, look at the, you can use this flag to look at the device code. So offload device only gives you the LLVM IR for the device code only. It's really only using for, it's in useful for debugging. However, there's also the minus F OpenMP offload mandatory flag, which effectively disables the host fallback in OpenMP offload. Um, and basically says, okay, I only create target regions for the device, um, which is sometimes really useful, especially if you have, you know, CUDA functions or so on that only exist on the device and you want to call them and you're not interested in ever running your target regions on the host. So this, so you don't have to create, you know, host alternatives or host uh, fallback codes uh, for device only code. Oh yeah, um, we'll, we'll skip this. Now, a couple of uh, small tools that are that are interesting to people. So when you build LLVM or if it's installed, there's a, there's a binary called LLVM OpenMP device info, which if you run it, will tell you what LLVM knows about your, your devices on your system. So the first four devices are going to be CPU devices. And then no matter how many CPUs you have, that's just an artifact for now. And then afterwards it will show all the GPUs and what we know about the GPU. So you know about like what kind of um, compute capabilities you have, what GPU it is, memory size, and so on and so forth. So this gives you an idea if LLVM actually is able to um, see your GPUs and also gives you an idea about what the GPU properties are. Um, you can turn on um, target profiling with LLVM since 12 by just setting an environment variable, lipom target underscore profile. And what you get out of there is a JSON file that you can load into Chrome tracing or a lot of other tools that support the Chrome tracing format. And that gives you, you know, um, a trace, a very simple trace of what is happening. And with LLVM 16, so the next release, we're actually going to give you the capability to either automatically or manually profile parts of your kernel code. So of your device code and embed that into this profile as well. So this was not going to be as good as, you know, these big profiling libraries, but it gives you something that is that comes with LLVM by default. And if you just want to do some local profiling or like, you know, some quick checks, this is really useful. Okay, because I'm running out of time. Um, quick summary. Um, with LLVM OpenMP, you can offload to remote GPUs if you want, if you want to. So this is upstream and available. And currently we are looking at adding a, an MPI backend as well. So if you want to program only OpenMP and you want to, but you program multiple GPUs or technically even one GPU, you can utilize hardware that is in the cloud or on, on distributed systems uh, purely with OpenMP. So on the user level side, there is no difference whatsoever. Um, it, it also scales uh, reasonably well. So this is an example of XS Bench scaling to 100 20 GPUs uh, with uh, moderate overheads. Um, one more thing I wanted to show is uh, what is currently being you know, merged into LLVM and that is using LLVM OpenMP as a target intermediate runtime. Um, what it allows us to do, and I show just show results here, is this is a CUDA code, a plain CUDA code, SU3 from, from NERSC, that we run through the OpenMP layer through the virtual OpenMP GPU target on the host, and then we attach GDB to it, and then we debug this CUDA code on the host with GDB. You can use all the host tooling, but it's the original CUDA code, and it kind of runs in the same you know, GPU fashion. Similarly, you can take um, you can take CUDA code, and you can compile CUDA code with Clang. Um, onto other hardwares, not only the host, but also you can take that CUDA code and run it on AMD hardware. Um, and it's not only about CUDA code, but what we're showing here is that OpenMP gives us this target independent runtime and we can 
if we use it, we can merge and interoperate CUDA, OpenMP, HIP, SICL, and so on and so forth, so that you can mix and match in your application, whatever you like best. And behind the scenes, everything will work together and be portable as well, which is great. And um, the results here, long story short, we generally perform just as well as the native programming language in the native compiler. Okay, um, the last thing I briefly mentioned is what we are presenting at the SC workshop for the LLVM HPC workshop in a few weeks. Um, the classic idea is your program runs on the CPU and you orchestrate your data and computation movement in kernels onto the GPU, which is what we're doing for years, right? So you find things that you can offload effectively. Um, what we're looking right now, uh, what we're looking at right now is let's reverse this. Let's run the entire program on a GPU and only you know, go back to the host if we have to for like syscalls and, and certain libraries for which we don't have the, the device implementation. Um, as part of this work, we, we literally take entire programs, no modification, and we run them on the GPU. And while the, the paper that you see at LLVM HPC is going to show really bad performance numbers, but it shows proof of concept, um, our news performance numbers look pretty good. So, and this effectively gets rid of all the porting whatsoever. Um, we just run the entire thing on the GPU, which also works in, a, in an environment where you do not have unified shared memory, by the way, which is kind of fun. Okay. Um, I'll leave it with that because I want to have some, some time for questions and the slides will be available where you can see the, the recap and outlook. Thank you. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, thanks a lot for agreeing to give the talk. Uh, we have one question. Um, and so I'm, I'm sorry, I've, I've lost my chat. Right. Question is, is LLVM OpenMP working with MLIR Polygeist? In short, are you seeing benefits from the new IR and the tooling within the OpenMP group? Um, so MLIR Polygeist is a front end, for everyone that doesn't know, that takes the client AST, including OpenMP, and translate it through, like, into MLIR representation, and then from there into the LLVM uh, representation. Um, you can use that to, to uh, port code, <laughs> funnily enough, including CUDA code, to host OpenMP. Um, that works, and there is currently no driver in, you know, infrastructure to use MLIR to do OpenMP offloading. Um, you can just get a subset of the host OpenMP, uh, but people are, are working on this. And how about the benefits? Um, we see benefits if you do these, you know, fancy things like take CUDA code and translate it into host code, where you do complex transformations in order to make it run fast. But we are not actually like we haven't explored anything beyond that. So there isn't no any benefits in you know just simple um, same device, same target optimizations. Um, those only exist in LLVM IR itself in the OpenMP optimization pass. Um, on the last topic on running the program on a GPU and going to the host only when needed, what is the state of the art doing IO directly from the GPU, meaning without having to use explicit device to host topics and using device to host libraries? Okay, cool. Um, as far as I can, as far as I know, the state of the art is there. There is no production working solution or even research solution that I'm aware of that does it. But I'm actually trying to get someone to work on it because there was um, some NVIDIA folks have shown, you know, proof of concept that you can do IO from the GPU. And um, I would really like to have an open library to do that. Um, and then provide effectively things like F open, F read, and so on on the device through through direct communication with the kernel rather than RPC syscalls and so on. Um, this is also part of our effort that we're currently uh, really engaged in is getting libc and libc plus plus to run on the GPU, um, or at least in large parts. 
I hope that kind of answered your question. But thank, thank you, you have, Johannes. Yeah, Mara, if you have any more information on this, feel free to reach out. I mean, I'm super interested in this.